Have you ever come across the names Kasgebi, Zolgensma, or Kimraya? Do these sound familiar or completely foreign to you? These aren't just quirky words or spells from fantasy books. They represent 3 out of 34 approved gene therapy drugs that are reshaping the landscape of medicine. Today, we will explore an incredible world of gene therapy, genetic engineering, and cutting-edge CRISPR technology. If you've been curious about these terms and want a clear grasp of how they function, you're in the right spot. By the end of this video, you'll unlock the fundamental principles behind gene therapy. First, let's look at the gene therapy example for spinal muscular atrophy, SMA, a drug called Zolgensma. SMA is a genetic disorder affecting the motor neurons in the spinal cord and brainstem, leading to muscle weakness and atrophy. This neuromuscular disease is caused by a deficiency of the survival motor neuron, SMN, protein due to a mutation in the SMN1 gene. The lack of this essential protein impairs the proper functioning of motor neurons, which are responsible for controlling voluntary muscle movement. The goal of gene therapy is to address the underlying cause of SMA by providing a functional copy of the SMN1 gene to produce the SMN protein, thereby potentially improving motor neuron function and alleviating disease progression. However, it is not a complete cure as it does not improve irreversible damage that may have already occurred in the nervous system before treatment. This gene therapy utilizes an altered form of the AAV9 virus, which lacks the ability to replicate and spread between individuals. This modified virus acts as a carrier, delivering the missing SMN1 gene to motor neurons. The treatment is administered intravenously, allowing it to travel through the bloodstream to reach the brain and motor neurons, aiding in the production of the SMN protein crucial for SMA patients. The body's immune response to virus-based gene therapy mirrors how it reacts to a flu virus. When administered, viral vector triggers the production of antibodies in the body. Despite this immune reaction, a newly introduced gene can still generate the necessary SMN protein. However, a second AAV9 injection wouldn't be effective due to the developed immunity. Hence, the treatment is effective with just a single injection. In this gene therapy, a harmless virus injected directly into a patient's body delivers an additional healthy copy of a gene. This is called in vivo gene therapy. However, the virus doesn't always need to be injected directly into the patient. In certain gene therapies, the virus is utilized in the lab to introduce an additional gene copy. This method applies to cells that can be extracted and returned to the body, with blood cells being the prime example. Kimraya. Chimeric antigen receptor CAR T-cell therapy utilizes modified versions of a patient's blood cells to combat cancer cells. In a 22-day process, the treatment is customized for each person. Firstly, cellular therapy employs the patient's T-cells, a type of white blood cells, as a therapeutic solution. Secondly, gene therapy involves introducing genes into the patient's cells to induce the production of a new therapeutic protein called chimeric antigen receptor CAR. These cells are then genetically altered in a laboratory using lentivirus. As a result, genetically engineered T cells leverage the patient's immune system to target CD19 protein and combat cancer. Following this modification, the newly engineered cells are reintroduced into the patient's bloodstream. It is used to treat cancer patients who are up to 25 years old with B-cell precursor acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It is a type of blood cancer that originates in the bone marrow, specifically affecting B-cells. This aggressive leukemia primarily affects children but can also occur in adults. Kimraya is an example of ex vivo gene therapy because no virus was injected into the patient and the only immune reaction it causes is against cancer cells. Another example of ex vivo therapy is Kasgebi. It is used to treat sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. These are lifelong, genetic disorders caused by mutations in the genes that code for adult hemoglobin, a protein that red blood cells need to transport oxygen around the body after birth. During fetal development, humans produce a slightly different kind of hemoglobin that is switched off after birth by the BCL11A gene and replaced by the adult version. In both conditions, people with two mutated copies of the beta-globin gene make faulty adult hemoglobin, 
which in turn affects the shape and function of red blood cells, causing a range of symptoms. Therefore, they need to start making fetal hemoglobin again. The CRISPR system cuts genes out of DNA using an enzyme called Cas9, which acts as molecular scissors. To do this, blood-making stem cells are taken from a patient's bone marrow, and the BCL11A gene is edited and turned off. In the laboratory, the CRISPR editing components are introduced by electroporation, meaning no virus is used. This makes a much smaller change to the genome than other gene therapies, which insert a whole working copy of a gene into the cell's genome. The newly modified cells with functioning fetal hemoglobin are then infused back into the patient's body. Before the infusion, the patient must take a chemotherapy drug to eliminate the unedited and faulty cells still in their bone marrow. After the procedure, most patients with sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia experience relief from their symptoms. In 2023, seven new cell and gene therapies have been approved to treat patients with various diseases, and now you know how they work. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe for more insightful content, share with your friends, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest breakthroughs in science. Until next time, keep stretching your brain.